Hi everybody, this is Ben Songer out of the Learning Technology Center of Illinois, and I want to give you all a couple of quick tips on how to lead professional development virtually because we're all entering a time right now that it can be a little crazy out there and we might have to shift some of the stuff that we used to do face to face into a virtual environment and that's going to be new to us. So I used to do this a lot back when I first started giving PD. I actually did all of it online and it was a very interesting experience. We used Google Hangouts at the time because we didn't have fun tools like Zoom or Google Meet that allowed a lot of people to join in available when I first started. So I've got some tips here, five tips that I think are really important. So the first one is be prepared. Um, make sure you have your presentation ready. You're going to share from a presentation more than likely when you're teaching virtually or you're leading professional development virtually. Uh, it's a different environment, so all of us usually present from a presentation anyways, but this is something that we want to make sure we have it ready to go and that you have your talking points ready to go with it. It's also going to be a very visual experience for uh, your learners, so having more information on slides maybe than you normally did might be something that can be appreciative in case you know something happens in the background. Um, the other thing is it's going to be very tough sometimes when you're doing this to uh, get people to talk. There's going to be a lot of times of silence. So coming prepared with maybe some specific question prompts instead of, so what do you guys think about that? Um, might be better to get people to actually talk and communicate inside of the session. Uh, just simply asking a blanket question doesn't always work in a virtual environment. So along those lines, be prepared for silence. People, for some reason, when they get into these calls, often don't like to actually say anything. Um, they'll use the chat a lot, and we'll get to that in a little bit, but speaking doesn't appeal to them, or they don't want to appear on camera, and they don't want to sound dumb in front of somebody else, or sometimes maybe they just don't like the sound of their own voice. So be cognizant that there's going to be a lot of silence, perhaps, in these times, and just know it's not because you're doing something wrong. It's just that generally people don't like to talk uh, in virtual meetings all that much. And then if you do want to get them to talk, I would suggest using Zoom and using the breakout room feature. So Zoom offers breakout rooms that you as a host can actually put people into. It gives them a small group feel, and it might be better if you have a larger group that you're dealing with to put them into breakouts, so that way they can have that opportunity to discuss things. Number two, make sure you have a system set up for delivering quality content. And what I mean by that is make sure that you have stuff set up in your uh, area, in your office, like I have right now, that's good for delivering content. So for example, I'm actually on a webcam right now, not on my MacBook uh, camera because it's higher and so it's making eye level with me. Um, if you are using your computer, make sure you raise it up. Something like a simple stack of books to bring that thing up will make it all that much better because you don't want your people looking at the bottom of your chin. You want them looking at your eyes. So that's just something that's very helpful. The other thing is make sure you have a good microphone. Now most of the time your microphone on your device, your computer that you're using or whatever might be good enough. Don't always recommend maybe using headphones uh, because sometimes those microphones are actually worse for presenting those things. I've talked to some people that are on headsets and it sounds like they're underwater. Something you might consider is a small microphone. So I've got one right here. That's actually what I'm using right now to talk to you all. Um, that was like $40 on Amazon. It's a Samsung Go mic and it really does a good job of picking up high quality sound in a small area. So consider those things when you're trying to make sure your setup looks good. And then the last thing is make sure you have good lighting. So I'm actually using peek behind the curtain, another light here to make sure that my face is kind of balanced out in this video. Otherwise I would have like a two face look going on. So have some good lighting if you really want to make sure you appear well in your picture, or if you're not really concerned about that, that's probably one of the more minor things on there. Uh, in your setup, also be sure to turn off notifications on your computer and on your phones. There's nothing worse than when you're in the middle of a presentation and your uh, chat starts going off and dinging in the background as you're trying to present. It might be distracting for your participants, but more than likely it's going to be distracting for you and not so much them. So make sure you kind of mute those things, close those tabs out. Uh, on that same set, make sure you don't have a million tabs open on your computer. The more tabs you have open on your computer while you're trying to present virtually, the more your computer is probably going to slow down. So make sure you close some tabs out and you don't have a ton of those open. Lastly, another on uh, the setup, having two monitors really helps. So right now I have my MacBook down here and I have my monitor up here. So when I'm on a Zoom call, I'm often looking at a bigger monitor. And then if somebody asks me something, I look over to my computer to look it up. So I don't have to keep changing my screens back and forth. I can have my chat up over here or I can have the web browser up over here so I can Google things and still keep my presentation up over on the second monitor. So having two monitors helps. If you don't have a second monitor, maybe have an iPad ready to go or a Chrome book and you can have that next to you so that way you can look up things if you need to in a pinch and not have to minimize your screen and go back and forth. So those are some things about your setup that I think could be very helpful. 
Number three, if possible, bring in a co-host. This could be really helpful for you because if you have second set of eyes and ears in the conversation, it can really, really be beneficial. So one of the things that will happen is that you might get people whose mics turn on in the middle of your presentation or in the middle of your session and you're presenting. So you don't have an opportunity to go in and mute those people. If you have a co-host, more than likely they'll be able to go in and they'll be able to monitor those things for you and they can mute people for you. Um, the other thing is there, it's really helpful to have a co-host moderate in the chat. So while you're delivering content, people are very, very, very uh, likely to be adding things into the chat box. And that's really hard for you as a person, and as a presenter, to talk about what's on your screen and look at the chat at the same time and keep up with it. If it's an engaging topic, the chat's just going to be flowing like crazy. So having a co-host there to kind of monitor the chat, help answer questions in the chat, but then also just be able to provide a perspective of what was going on in the chat when you get done talking can be very, very beneficial. They can also listen for things that you might have missed. So you could be having a conversation with another person in the in the group, but you might miss some little key element that they said. Having a co-host there to kind of pick up on those things can be really, really beneficial. And then the last thing with this is, uh, or two things, I guess, one more thing is that it's really helpful to have somebody to talk to in times of silence. So we talked about that in number one is that you might have this bunch of abundance of silence of people not responding because they don't want to or their microphone's not working something like that and having a co-host can actually be someone to talk to and discuss some of the things that you just said so that can be helpful and then the last thing about having a co-host is that somebody to debrief with if you're new to this it's going to be helpful to have somebody after the session talk you through what went right and what went wrong and so that's i think going to be really really helpful too is somebody just to talk things through how did that go you know and all that Number four, know your platform. So whether this is Zoom, Google Meet, GoToMeeting, uh, anything like that, you're going to want to understand the ins and outs of your platform. You don't have to be an expert in it, but just know some of the basics because that's going to really helpful. It's going to be really helpful to make sure your meeting goes smooth or your presentation goes smooth. So. What I would suggest some of the basics is make sure you know how to share joining information. Um, that's helpful at the start because you can share out how to get to your meeting, but then also sometimes when you're just starting it or you're turning on, I can't tell you how many times I've been asked, hey, how do I get in, in an email or a text or something prior five minutes prior to the thing started. So make sure you know where that sharing information is at while you're in the meeting so that way you can get people to your Zoom call or your Hangouts Meet or whatever you're using. Um, make sure you know how to start the chat. That's really important. Know where that's at. Know how that archives as well. Know that you can save the chat in a lot of different um, programs. So that's really helpful. Know how to share your screen. I think that is number one when we're doing these things is a lot of us are, like I said, we're going to have a presentation that we're going to share. Make sure you know how to share your screen and know how to share it effectively. Uh, and then the last thing is know how to mute your rogue mics. Okay, so you're gonna have people join late. You're gonna have people join in at you know come go out, come back in. Their microphones might get turned on. Somebody might bump it. Somebody might want to. I've seen this a lot where they want to start talking, so they unmute, but then they something happens, so they just leave it on, and then next thing you know, something happens and you can hear something in the background. So know how to mute those rogue mics. Know how you can go through and control that, so that way you don't have uh, distractions happening in your uh, in your presentation. All right, lastly, number five, have empathy for your participants. This is a really new learning situation for all of us, um, or for a lot of us at least. And some of some people have never joined a virtual meeting before. They've never done PD where they don't have somebody leaning over their shoulder to help them do something and get through that. So have some empathy for them. Know that there might be questions that you have to follow up with after the fact. So you might not get the questions in the session because they don't want to ask them, but you're going to get bombarded with them after the fact. That's going to be okay. Let that happen. Okay. Um, the other thing is don't force them to sit and listen for extended periods of time. Uh, when I used to do these, I tried to keep them to an hour or two hours because that's a long time to sit at a computer and stare at a screen and listen to somebody talk. So give them a lot of breaks. If it is going to be a full day thing, make sure you're giving them a lot of breaks allowing them to stand up, stretch their legs, go for a quick walk, you know, those types of things. Because longer periods of time in front of a computer can be really boring and really easy to get distracted and start surfing the internet for all sorts of things. So just be cognizant of that, have empathy for them as they sit there and they have to listen to you. Um, when they are listening to you, try to be funny, mix in jokes, keep it light, you know, because that's what we're all here for. Um, that keeps them engaged, that keeps them focused in on you. Um, the last thing is, 
Silence from a group doesn't mean that they don't understand. Sometimes silence is just how video instruction goes. So I know I've said this about three times, but I think it's really important to keep addressing is that this is a really hard thing for people to gather. They're, they're used to sitting in a room with you. They're not used to sitting and listening to you talk via a computer. So as you're sitting there and as they're sitting there and they're listening, they might not get it, but that doesn't mean that they're, you know, they, they, I mean, they might get it, but that doesn't mean they're going to actually tell you that they got it, right? Or they might not get it and they're going to need more support later. So silence doesn't mean that you're doing a bad job. Uh, it just means that they don't want to talk and that's fine. Sometimes it's like pulling teeth to get people to do. So that's why you go back to be prepared, have question prompts and look for breakout rooms. Okay. So those are my five big tips for leaving, uh, leading professional development. Uh, in a virtual environment. I think it's really a powerful medium to get people to get out there and get your message out there and continue the learning uh, in times where we can't get together and meet in person. But no, there's a lot of challenges with this too as far as your participants go. It's not as easy as just turning on a camera and expecting it to be the same thing it was when you had a group of 30 people sitting in the same room as you. So it's a fun thing to do. It's challenging. It's not for everybody, but it's definitely something that is worth a try and if you're nervous about it go back to that number three and have a co-host have somebody in there with you guiding you through it trying you know trying to tackle this whole thing on your own can be very very difficult so with that those are my five tips for leading professional development in a virtual environment i hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions at all about this or want to reach out uh, reach out to the ltc ltcillinois.org and we'd be happy to help thanks for watching